Hi, my name is Charles. Hi. So you're the son of a Galician or a Gallego and, yeah. uh, and, a, and a Basque. Your family were exiled. Do you think you have a little bit of revolution in the blood, a little bit of a, a kind of natural affinity for the smaller, for the small guys? It's rage against um, what's happening in the world, you know? It's, it's not standable. So few people with everything and uh, every, all the rest of the planet starving. It's not a way... I don't, I don't want that planet for my sons. So I think that's a fact. And you told my father from, he's from Galicia, my mother from País Basco. Uh, they've been fighting also for this kind of cause too. And so still, still I'm a kid. Uh, I'm involved in that, you know, because of my family and uh, I'm proud of that. Is that why you chose the Basque town of Bayonne for the, uh, for the concert that you filmed on your TV team? The fiestas of Bayonne are very good. And um, we played there five years ago and, and when we have the opportunity to do this recording and, and go back to the fiestas of Bayonne, I say let's do it there because, uh, because it's very good when you do a show in a, in a, in a town when the show is not the only party at night, you know? All the town is totally crazy and all the streets are burning and that's wonderful to do a show in this kind of ambience, you know? So when the show is finished, there's not this kind of eternal question, what are we going to do next? I mean, it's, it's quite striking on the video, you see thousands of people with white t-shirts and red, uh -huh. red cravat. But it's true that in Bayonne, it's tradition when it's the fiesta of Bayonne, everybody goes on white with the red stuff here. So, so it was fun. It's funny in the video because all the crowd is white, white and red, and it it looked nice. It was not expected because I didn't thought about that when when we decided to do the video there. But uh, I'd make something really nice, I think. What is the connection that you have? What is the fascination of people on the, on the edges of society? So when you meet people that got everything, it's, it's terrible, but it's obvious they want to change nothing. <laughs> when you meet people that got nothing, and of course they want to change things, and I think it's normal because things are not standable, as I said, like, like it is now. So. It's a good start to start working and do things and change, try to change this world for something better. The example you told about Colifata, that is a little radio in, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Yeah, from a psychiatric hospital. So it's the people that are, uh, the patients that, that are there, living there, that do the radio. Very hard conditions of living, of um, medication of everything quite art stuff you know but they do this little radio and this radio is the it's really a very good therapy for them you know and and i should say also for me you have a cd coming out featuring work that you did there yeah it's it's, it's been released already but it's not a cd it's only on inter in internet and everybody can download it for free in vivalacolifata.org I cannot talk for them, but I can talk for me. I think it's the best thing I made uh, maybe in my life, in music. Uh, I put the music, they put the lyrics. Oh, and uh, what they're saying is totally incredible. I'm really, really, really proud of this project because every time I listen to it, I, I really get impressed. What they, of course, it's all in Spanish, so maybe it's more difficult for Spanish, uh, for English people or for French people to really understand what's happening there because it's very, very, very strong lyrics. It's incredible. And um, so, of course, they told me what, that was good for them, it was good for me, and uh, in the medical level, uh, everybody around the world is quite amazed and now a lot of hospitals all around the world invite them to come and to explain how they're doing because uh, in a medical way it's uh, apparently it really works. 
You had this, uh, I, I think, kind of an epic tour with Mano Negro, which, you know, for me is like, uh, it's like Robert Johnson goes to the crossroads and he gets a guitar, or Jesus goes, mm -hmm. to, the, goes to the desert and meets the devil. You know, it seems to be the, the moment when you disappear and you come back a kind of new person. I met the devil f few times in South America, but most of all uh, I met wonderful people. <laughs> and uh, been the best lesson of life I could have in my, in my life, you know, and it was incredible school of music, uh, incredible opportunity to, to go there and with Mano Negra. So touring, so when you're touring there's always this kind of problem that you cannot stay so much time everywhere, you know. But after we've been touring with the boat, so it was very interesting because we stay, for every show we stay maybe one month in Rio, one month in Buenos Aires, three weeks in Caracas. So it was, uh, we, we were touring, but at the same time we had time to really feel the everyday life from the cities there and take a lot of contacts. So when Mano Negra stopped, um, I went back to South America and and go back to see all my friends I met with Mano Negra there and I start spending a lot of time in Mexico after we have this incredible adventure in Colombia where we built a train and crossed all Colombia with the train. Was that, was that, that was still with Mano Negra with the train? Not really. Mano Negra was, everybody thinks it was Mano Negra but Mano Negra was off by the time. Everybody associated that to Mano Negra, but it was there was few guys from Mano Negra, me, Tom, the keyboard, and Tomasin, the engineer, and, uh, and Mano Negra made one show, uh, I think the first show in Santa Marta, and after he was part of Mano Negra, part of French Lovers, that was a band from the streets of Paris, the band of Gambit that play with me now, of, in Radio Bemba. A uh, lot of people from circus, uh, a circus and, and th street theater also. Uh, street theater from France, very famous now called Royal Deluxe. And so they were, everybody was from different bands, different uh, circus or theater, but everybody came on his own. There was not really um, something official of a band or of a so circus. So of like, a, like a magic bus, a little totally, magic train. Totally, totally, totally. There was a transformation in your, well, you know, in your circumstances and also in your music while you were in Latin America. For sure. And are you still, are you looking for the next transformation? Are you um, happy where you are? No. I'm not uh, nervous about that. I think transformations in life have to come naturally. So uh, just wait for the next transformation. And every day it's coming. I think uh, I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I can do a lot of things. Uh, I can travel a lot. I can. There's a lot of opportunities for me. So just follow the feeling and follow what's in the air. But I don't try to to try to get that organized. Like I got no schedules in my life. I, I'm lying, I got scheduled till maybe January now or February. But after, let's wait and see and you never know what life's gonna bring you, you know? So always open to learn, always ready to meet new cultures to to under, try to understand these new cultures and after in a certain way it's part of you so you use it <laughs>